we went over this in class one day, but I decided I should probably make a video of it. It's possible I actually did make a video of it and then forgot about it and didn't upload it, so let's just go through this again. A college reports that the average age of their students is 28 years old. Is this a statistic or a parameter? Now statistics are based on samples of a population that you're trying to represent. A parameter is when you actually have all of the information and can calculate the actual number. So a college would have every student's age and that could be calculated into the average and so we would call that a parameter. To determine the average length of trout in a lake, researchers catch 20 fish and measure them. What is the sample and population in this study? So the sample is just the 20 trout that are caught. The population is representing the trout in the lake. Now, the study itself is to find the average length, but that is not what the population is. The population is the actual trout in the lake, and then the ones studied, the ones caught. Okay, so I have distractors in here that have like the average length. That is like what's being studied. That's going to be the actual statistic. That's not the population or the sample that the statistic comes from. Classify each measurement as categorical or quantitative. So categorical would be things where something goes into a category. Quantitative is having to do with numbers. So eye color would be categorical. Temperature would be quantitative. Income is a number, quantitative. Hopefully that makes sense. Pretty easy. Match each case with the sampling method used. So every fourth person in the class was selected. That would be systematic. A sample was selected to contain 25 men and 35 women. So that's like a quota system. Now this is listing both stratified and quota together. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between those. Quota is where you're meeting a certain quota. So this would be like a quota of 25 men and a quota of 25 women, 35 women. Stratified is when you do a percentage of the whole. So like if you had a group in your population that had like um, 500 men and 700 women and you were just doing 5% of those, then you would be doing 5% of the 500 men, and that would be 25 men. Or you would be doing 5% of the 700 women, and that would be 35 women. So the way this is written as 25 and 35, the actual number, that's quota. If it had 5% of the men and 5% of the women, then that would be stratified. Viewers of a new show are asked to vote on the show's website. So that's a voluntary response because they have to volunteer. They have to actually choose to go to their computer or their phone and participate in the vote. A website randomly selects 50 of their customers to send a satisfaction survey to. So that sounds like simple random, right? They are just choosing randomly 50 of their customers. They're sending the survey and maybe they're requiring them to do that survey before they can actually buy anything on the website or read something on the website. There's ways to kind of force a little survey so that you get the results you want without having that voluntary bias because only people who were willing to do it did it. To survey voters in a town, a polling company randomly selects 10 city blocks and interviews everyone who lives on those blocks. So that's called a cluster sample because it's broken into clusters and then certain clusters are randomly chosen to be in the study. All right, question five. In each situation, identify a potential source of bias. I'm just gonna make this a little bigger. Sometimes this writing is hard to read. 
Okay, a radio station asks readers to phone in their choice in a daily poll. So that would maybe have some sort of voluntary response bias because um, people might not do it if they're like driving in their car and they're not um, they're not going to make a phone call while they're driving and stuff like that. Um, also, I'm confused about why a radio station would ask readers. Hmm. Because don't we listen to a radio station? I don't know why that just occurred to me. But anyway, regardless, it's voluntary, and therefore you might get some bias because of the type of people that would be willing to call in. I guess it depends on what the survey was about. A substitute teacher wants to know how students in the class did on their test. The teacher asks the 10 students sitting in the front row to state their latest test score. So that would be a convenient sample because the teacher is conveniently choosing the students on the front row, right? So the problem with that is da, 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 the sampling bias where just the front row students may not be representative of the entire class. Because kind of a different type of students usually sit on the front row than sit in the back. I mean, I know that that's stereotyping, but it tends to be true. Stereotypes exist for a reason. High school students are asked if they have consumed alcohol in the last two weeks. Now, the bias there may be lack of anonymity because they may not be willing to admit if they did. They say they didn't when they actually did. The Beef Council releases a study stating that consuming red meat poses little, little cardiovascular risk. So that's a self-interest study because if they can um, show through a study that red meat doesn't risk heart health, then more people would be willing to buy and eat beef, right? Because studies going the other direction would make fewer people, perhaps, to eat red meat so that they could be healthy. A poll asks, do you support a new transportation tax or would you prefer to see our public transportation system fall apart? So that is a loaded question because the question itself is pushing or guilting survey participants a certain direction in answering that. It's already giving an opinion. All right, so of course bias is where maybe our results from a study are not accurately representing a population because of how they are collected. All right, in each scenario describing an observ is is each scenario describing an observational study or an experiment. So the weights of 30 randomly se selected people are measured. That's just observ observational. Subjects are asked to do 20 jumping jacks and then their heart rates are measured. So there's a treatment applied, jumping jacks, and then there's a, a result of that treatment, right, which makes it an experiment. It doesn't specifically say this, but I'm assuming that they would compare those heart rates to normal resting heart rates. So I would call that an experiment. 20 coffee drinkers and 20 tea drinkers are given a concentration test. So we have two different groups, two different treatments, and we're comparing them. So that would also be an experiment. Question seven. To test a new lie detector, two groups of subjects are given the new test. One group is asked to answer all the questions truthfully, and the second group is asked to lie on one set of questions. The person administering the lie detector test does not know which group each subject is in. So does the experiment have a control group? Um, we could say maybe yes, in which case the control group would be the group telling the truth because we're testing a lie detector. So this would not be the case, even if it was yes, it wouldn't be the lying group. But this one is more likely because no, both groups are treatment groups since the administrator doesn't know who is lying and who is telling the truth. Is this blind, double blind, or neither? So I'm assuming that this would just be blind because the people participating know whether they're lying or not. It's the person administering the test that doesn't. So that's just single blind because one group, know, like 
The participants know. The administrator does not know. It's double blind when both groups, both the participants and the administrators, don't know. That's double blind. And when everyone knows what's going on, that would be neither. All right. I hope that helps. Just